Hi guys, uh, thank you so much for joining our last stream in 2022, which is crazy. Um, I think we can start. Uh, if anyone is, was attending our last stream, welcome back. If uh, you are here for the first time, thank you so much for joining. Hopefully we will see you in 2023. Um, my name is Anya. I'm a business development manager of Kmine. And if, if you haven't already, please follow our LinkedIn page where we post our announcements for the future streams. So today we will talk about uh, resource modeling and strategic planning in Kmine and more specifically, how to create a strategic planning database and solve strategic tasks. So if we go over our agenda, we will see that after reviewing the full work cycle, we will see how to work with the geological information, including the block model and uh, what would include things like how to create a block model in Kmine, how to work with the database and how to apply just statistical analysis, creating wireframes and filling up the block model. Uh, after the block model uh, will be prepared, we'll see how to prepare the data from, for uh, strategic planning. And after that, we'll show you how to determine the optimal uh, parameters for strategic plan that would provide a good economic conditions. And in the end, we will define optimal contours, uh, contours and we will divide the final bid into pushbacks. So it's a lot of house uh, today. Uh, for people that um, join our webinar for the very first time, I just wanna talk about um, some highlights of Kmine and what we do, what we are about. Uh, we are a money software company that has been on the market for almost uh, 30 years. We provide one standalone application um, that is customizable and adaptable for each company's needs. That allows us basically to work with a company of any size and provide us and provide them uh, with a reasonable pricing because our solution is model based. The application is based on its own pattern graphic core and that core processes information way faster and is proven to provide more precise calculation and estimation when it comes to, let's say, resource estimation um, or let's say how many explosives and charges you need. Overall, we aim to cover the most operational needs such as 3D modeling, resource estimation, planning, equipment management, and so on. So what does it mean specifically? Today we build 12 models for open pit and underground mine. Each of this model can be uh, configured, adjusted, enhanced for each deposit. And because basically the company business model is based on the policy of maximized optimization and ultimate belief that software should be designed around the company and its needs, um, not vice versa. Our engineers not only set up uh, the whole company infrastructure during the implementation of our solution, but also assist our clients at any stage of work creating 3D models, planning schedules, estimating resources and reserves. And each of these 12 models can be used as a standalone model or they can use in the conjunction with each other. So you can basically uh, pick whatever models uh, you would like that would cover your workflow. And that would be, um, be the models that you will use. Or you can use just one model if you want. Um, and that allows us basically to create one digital space where all geologists, mining engineers, uh, surveyors can work together, exchanging information, receiving real-time data from the site. The company offers um, specialists um, that, uh, the ability to edit their calculations and um, you know, they can change anything at any time. And this way, mining managers and directors can get an up-to-date summary of the situation in the mine and make decisions faster when it comes to the changes on the site or on the market. We also offer custom solutions uh, when we integrate upon the request uh, because um, not everyone needs it, but uh, especially for corporations, they need end-to-end uh, -end mine planning where they basically have to uh, follow the value chain from the moment you start mining until the moment the product hits the market. Um, and, um, you know, you can have it split per shift, per day, uh, plan the load distribution on the equipment and many other parts of the process. 
The other new solution that we uh, released is IoT platform, um, and that works as a web-based interface. And this way, um, this is kind of like a, a game changer for the top management of the company because basically the solution transmits real-time information from IoT devices and personnel and can display gas consumption uh, information, can track location of the equipment and personnel, create a dashboard uh, based on this information and this analytics this reports um, are complemented by historical data. And so the company C-level management can receive heat maps about where employees have the most frequent problems, when equipment need, needs maintenance, etc. So all this information will help managers get real-time uh, reports about, and solve the problems efficiently on, and on time. And the other custom solutions um, are integrations with OpenPIT and dispatch uh, systems. Um, basically, these integrations allow to obtain and visualize information from dispatch systems. Um, and I will talk about it in more details a little bit later. But uh, basically, it's for various services, and it helps engineers to um, uh, to operate the mines su su successfully and, and uh, manage equipment on uh, for the open pit or underground mine. So um, that being said, um, the integration with uh, uh, with the different equipment um, also uh, uh, can uh, has to do with this surveying equipment. So it's like kind of like one of the areas that we improve on a daily basis. Our goal to create kind of like the most simple and automated way to gather data from the deposit so that people will not have to deal with papers or uh, with the, you know, a uh, bunch of uh, other reports in Excel. And then one of our customized solutions, we integrated with different dispatch and food management systems like Wenco, Mindstar, um, ACK modeler and color peeler. And basically um, in terms of integration, we actually basically can uh, integrate with any system that provides us um, information that we can receive and import it in our application. So we basically allow our customers to manage all of the mining processes inside of one interface. So uh, today our software also allows us to evaluate projects creating digital twins, creating um, life of mine, calculate resources, and all of our models uh, were based on the real use cases and projects, um, then just, you know, theoretical knowledge. Um, our idea that the best way to enhance the product is when you do consulting work, uh, because that's when you face challenges of the project, and that's why that's when you kind of like know exactly what you need to add into your tools in order to speed up your work. And that's why we offer different types of services uh, since we have a lot of money engineers, geologists, planners, surveyors, and other professionals in our staff. So, all right, so let's uh, start with the uh, theme of the today's uh, webinar and let's figure out first where it all begins, regardless of what type of deposit is to be mined. First, um, we need to do a sufficient geological study. Based on this information, we will do the first calculations of the profitability of uh, further exploration, and we choose a mining method and so on. But the geologists, they can use like specialized software, it can be ours, can be any, anything else, but the geologist creates a database and then using implicit or explicit modeling uh, interprets the mineralization zones and contours of ore bodies. Then a geostatistical analysis is performed and 3D model is created. At this stage, we make a decision about the size of block model blocks and a list of its attributes. So this way, a resource block model is created and we can use it to evaluate the mineral resources and reserves of the deposit. So K-Mine implements algorithm that can be um, you know, conveniently working with relation, uh, re relational databases. Um, there is statistical analysis, a built-in set of formulas and logical exp expression for calculations, and also a wide range of tools for visualization and, and analysis of samples in space. Uh, we also do explicit and implicit modeling. 
So uh, there are various options for all bodies contouring that you can use. For example, in one case, it's possible to interpolate the gradient blocks and determine the boundaries of ore bodies with a whole stroke um, if there are no clear geological or lithological conflicts. If there are lithological conclusions and selections of tectonic composition, it will be appropriate to use the explicit method. So at the model creation stage, it's important to understand what the block model will be used for, what tasks you plan to solve with it. For example, operational planning or design of money operation or for performing geological stru um, structural um, technological mapping or stability analysis of the rock mass. Filling with a block model attributes will be completely different in each of these cases. Also, at the stage of creating model, we need to uh, choose the size of blocks and it's very important. Uh, today, using the example of a graphite deposit, we will see how the qualitative and quantitative indicators of the model change when the block size changes. We will also show how to process um, the sub-blocking is performed in KMI and vice versa, re-blocking to a larger block sizes and bringing them to the same size, which would be uh, regularization. Um, so let's talk now uh, what follows um, the process after uh, we completed the full range of work on geological surveys. So what's happening is uh, it's engineer, uh, engineering work follows this uh, stage. First of all, you need to decide on the method of extraction, whether it's open pit or underground. The easiest way, if the solution is not obvious, is to measure the profit between two mining methods. And for this, you need to complete two projects. Also, what is not uncommon is a combined method when a deposit is developed by an open, open method and then is refined by an in the underground method. This is a part of st strategic planning. And then when the method was decided, we, uh, we can create a project called Life of Mind. It contains information about optimal contour, about pushbacks, and also approximate calendar, of course, and financial opportunities in general. Uh, that being said, it's important to have this general calendar because um, it's possible to move on the next stage of the planning, which is called midterm planning. And at this stage, the questions like where to dig or how much to dig are reviewed in more detail. And of course, we need to have a more clear understanding of the processes and equipment in this stage um, but the information from the midterm planning in forms of like graphs, wireframes, lines, and other things um, will pass to the short-term planning section. The guiding principle would be the specification of the place and volume for the subsequent detailing of the processes. So the short-term planning is the most time-consuming process since it is necessary to take into account so many factors that influence successful implementation of um, the planning. And uh, the last step of the uh, planning is the operational planning. This type is characterized by the fact that as a rule, um, it is carried out not by planners, but by dispatchers, by mining informant and personnel that is responsible for successful work of the specific shift. So they take the directives from short-term planning and they try to follow established plan as much as possible um, with the adoption of operational decisions on the ground. So of course, the results of a good plan and its execution of the analysis of the mining plan, uh, which will be the plan compliance or reconciliation. So let's review each stage in more detail. Uh, uh, the first stage of mine planning is strategic mine plan. The main target for this stage is to define the optimum optimal mine st uh, strategy. In the processes of strategic planning, we need to get answers to questions like, what are the main or secondary goals of the company and how to achieve these goals? And what are the obstacles on the way to this goal? And in the end, what is the strategy to achieve these goals, right? Also taking, talking about um, maximum profitability, you know, what would be the conditions for that? And what would be the factors that affect this profitability? The main 
most important output of strategic planning is life of mind plan. And we can get different scenarios of it. For example, uh, we can get a scenario with very low investment and usually what it means um, is uh, production rates will be reduced. And then we can review scenario uh, with the maximum investment or the scenario where we just keep mining as usual. The most critical thing to strategic mine planning is the input because the uh, poor quality data can lead to very misleading co uh, conclusions if it was not spotted during the evaluation process. The most important and at the same time, the most dangerous data in mining optimization is geology and how it will be processed at the stage of mineral processing. If geology and refining data are wrong, the whole optimization goes wrong. And doesn't matter how accurate the other parameters are, these are the most important things. And that's why the geological information that was provided during the mine optimization process must be as transparent as possible. And also it should be verified by more than one uh, qualified geologist. Other parameters used that are used for optimization are pretty simple because they are basically technical and economical parameters. We will break it down, if we would break it down to the set of rules of successful optimization, there will be around 10 of these rules. And the first, first rule of this process is that the objectives of the process of the project must be understood and communicated to the entire project team um, that is involved in strategy development business. And uh, um, the second rule is to correctly evaluate geology and processing. Just don't make any assumptions, uh, just evaluate it correctly. And then you can have to double check your metal price estimates and operating cost estimates. Better double check them with someone else. Um, always evaluate multiple scenarios. Um, always develop alternative strategies. Don't look only at profitability, but also at the consequences at this scenario. So you can analyze them, report them. And the other rule from that would be to plan mining according to mineral processing, because in the end, optimized production scenarios can significantly increase the NPV of your project. From the technical perspective, you can assess cutoff grade using a marginal, operational, or break-even uh, cutoff grade. And remember that or and dilution um, or, or dilution and or uh, waste are basically your hidden enemies in this process. Uh, as general rule, also remember uh, properly sized mine will always increase the value and success of your project. And remember to cross check your results uh, using different approaches, very good software. Again, it might be K-Mine, it might be someone else, something else, uh, but, but K-Mine. <laughs> and uh, remember that a single road at the top of an ore body won't necessarily ruin your project, but a natural preserve can. So we're moving on to uh, medium-term planning or technical planning, which usually is less labor-intensive because as a rule, at this stage of planning, strategic issues are not resolved, but they are somewhat guiding directions. So midterm planning is usually five years, but it can be up to 10 years and intervals can be split by years. Um, the main task here is to study these areas, detail them and develop a mining calendar for the midterm um, planning to make sure that the plan follows the intended direction. You can additionally calculate the economic information about the cash flows in the planned time periods. Overall, during this stage, you should understand when, where to mine and when each mining block should be mined and what is the sequence of the mining and what do you need to um, reach that specific target. So the next uh, planning is uh, uh, short-term planning and it's the most um, time-consuming process because you need to account for so many factors that affect planning of mining operations. Um, usually short-term planning is not more than two years and it could be split by weeks, months, or quarters, or years. And the main goal of this planning is to provide the most accurate mining sequences on the site. So that means it should be clear who, when, and what is required for each shift. Uh, very often, you also need to take into consideration schedule of run of mine, maintenance, um, drill and blast, stockpile balance, 
processing plant feeding schedule and other factors. During this stage, the main strategic requirements and defined mining sequences are static and they should be followed according to the previous stages of mining. After this stage, you will basically get the maximum clarity because basically you will analyze the entire implementation of the mining plan. And the analysis then can be taken to other departments uh, for in-depth analysis. And those guys um, should review the factors uh, that might must be taken into account if they want to approve the plan. So the next uh, type of planning is operational planning. And it's kind of like the most emotionally intense and responsible because you need to make a decision on the spot. No plan can foresee all possible scenarios because uh, we would always have the human factor. And that's why the implementation of uh, the plan as a whole depends if you made a decision on the spot correctly like no pressure, uh, but this is decision usually depends on the qualification of the person in charge. And if he can make this uh, decision based on the strategic goals of the company. So the operative planning usually uh, means it's up to 14 days and it could be split by shifts. That being said, uh, the operational planning involves the accurate coordination of the mining activities on the site which includes plan compliance and equipment control in real time. And as well, during this uh, planning, the main strategic requirements and defined mining sequences are static. So they should be followed according to the previous stages of planning. So now let's uh, take a look at the example of graphic ore uh, deposit and how the resource model is created. This deposit is mainly represented by biotite garnet and biotite graphite uh, nices. So we have already created a database with a table of the results of drill hole, uh, core testing for the content of graphite in the ore. Uh, KMine has developed a flexible toolkit uh, to visualize sampling data in space. So users can show the sampling intervals as text values, as a content curve graph, as a histogram. And users also can change their um, ratio settings and color palette for the visualization. Samples also can be shown on the screen as uh, cylinders of different di diameters, and it really depends on the value of the content in the sample. It's also very convenient to filter uh, lithological varieties in the table. And uh, by taking this filter into account, visualize individual intervals by drill hole. So for example, if we want to analyze the spatial position of biotite graphite nicenses, uh, using this filter in assay table, we can predict the contours of biotite uh, graphite nicenses domain uh, using implicit modeling. Yeah, so here you can see that we would use implicit modeling to predict contours of the biotite graphic nice domain. So if we talk about a modern uh, mining company, in order to be successful, it should have a good quality management strategy. Uh, mine planning is directly related to block modeling as a method uh, of determining the content of a useful component at any point in space. Uh, and it should select an elementary block that will meet a given condition. The use of the block model makes uh, it possible to work with smaller blocks than um, with the polygonal method of calculating reserves, which in return makes it possible to more reliably assess the localization of core and rich cores. This is happening because of the fact that the counting block in the polygonal method can contain all reserves for several years of the mining, and the size of the block model corresponds to the size of the mining block, which allows more accurate mine planning. 
So in KMine, users can at any time change the minimum block size and perform sub-blocking, which um, basically is, means splitting a block into smaller blocks and vice versa, re-blocking, which is enlarging the block size of the block model. For example, when creating a block model, the minimum block size along the X and Y axis uh, was 60 meters. To reblock the model, you just need to select the original model and specify the new minimum size of cubes in the block size field and save the file with a new name. This way you can store several block models in the um, current project at the same time, which is convenient if you do a comparative analysis of the model parameters. Users also can do a sub-blocking both for the entire model uh, block model as a whole or uh, for its individual zones bounded by surface or a solid. And KMine has two options for sub-blocking. One is the regular one, which is bringing all the blocks to the same size. And another one is a regular, uh, irregular um, mode, which means that the minimum size of the blocks will be only on the border of the wireframe as a limiter. And uh, uh, the remaining blocks would be of different sizes. At the same time, users can change the overall dimension of the model and add new attributes. Many differences between the ore reserves estimation, grade control, mining and milling components of the reconciliation chain stem from the incorrect understanding of how geostatistical concept of block size, panel size, and selective mining unit relate to actual mining practices. So when we do estimations in mining applications, we often try to map the special distribution of the mineral attributes based on the block, um, block support rather than the sample support. The selective mining unit is the minimum support upon which decisions will be made, especially or waste allocation decisions in open pit type of situations. The selective mining unit is usually smaller than the sampling grid dimensions and especially at exploration and feasibility stages. This is why the um, direct linear estimation of these small blocks has a very low precision. So we will see how to re-block the model to increase block sizes. We select the original uh, model with a block size of 30 by 30 by 7.5 uh, meters and specify a new minimum block size of 120 by 120 by 15 meters. To recalculate the values of uh, grades in blocks, we select the required one from the list of formulas, and it can be a weighted average by volume, uh, weighted average by tonnage, or a value by uh, maximum volume. We visualize only blocks in the graphite ore without host rocks and calculate volumes and average content. We'll see that the average graphite content in low grade ore was 1.74%, and the average graphite content in high grade ore was 4.83%. Um, now let's analyze the block model with the block sizes of 30 by 30 by uh, 3.75 meters. We see that um, the total volume of high grade ore has decreased from 86 million cubic meters to 62 million cubic meters. And at the same time, the average content of graphics in high grade ore was 6.49%. So with underestimated value of the block size, we significantly underestimated uh, volu um, the volume and tonnage while overestimating the average grade. So let's see an intermediate model between them with the block sizes of 60 by 60 by 7.5 meters. The values of volumes and average content are very close to the model with dimensions of 30 by 30 by 3.75 meters. And the use of the block model of the deposit makes it possible to calculate iteratively the volumes and quality indicators of ore grades and extraction units uh, that were identified according to different options of the content of useful components. We see that for a model of a block size, um, 120 by 120 by 15 meters, the intersection of curves of the gray, uh, gray tonnage graph at cutoff grade equals 3%. And now let's analyze the model with the block sizes 60 by 60 by 7.5 meters. And we see that interaction 
of the curves on the um, gray tonnage graphs is at cutoff grade equals 4%. So um, things that uh, make it possible to quickly manage the resource based are uh, a low degree of smoothing of great vari variability with a regular and fairly dense network combined with the um, use of cutoff grade in the block model as a condition parameter. This reduces risks and increases the profitability of the project without violating the principles um, rational use of subsoil. So you can also do a comparative analysis of the average contents in the original composites of, and blocks of the model and or so-called swath paths. Uh, sorry, sweat plots. Um, using this report, you can identify areas of significant discrepancy based on interpolation results, and we can analyze the reasons for these differences. At some deposits, the uh, planning of the mining operations in terms of the content of the useful component does not necessarily lead to the stable operation of the processing enterprise. That's happening because um, the commercial ore contains a charge of various technological grades. And this charge allows you to have a constant quality characteristics for the content of the useful component, but has sharply different technological properties. So based on working analytical relationships between ore concentration and ore quality indicators like content of useful components, the degree of oxidation of ores, fracturing, material composition, etc. So theoretically, geological and technological parameters can both be used in the block model of the deposit. Just in this case, you can determine the characteristics of uh, the concentration of ores in each block. So you can also plan in the mining of the blocks uh, with the necessary technological indicators and you can check if there is a possibility of selective uh, extraction of certain technological types and grades and develop plans for extractions and storage of ore during the mining of individual section of the deposit. You can also perform geometrization of ores um, that are equal or close in terms of technological characteristics. And finally, you can just optimize ore enrichment, um, like adjust um, reagent regimes and etc. So this way, uh, if you reasonably uh, use mining and qualified maintenance of block uh, geological and technological model data, you can quickly decide whether each next block uh, of uh, material should be uh, mined and processed, mined and stored, uh, mined and sent to the dump or as a host rock or just not extracted at all. So here's the data that we will use to create an, an op open pit optimization project. The block model dimension that was created and reviewed in um, today's demo are 60 by 60 by 7.5 meters. Mineral graphite, which is divided into three groups depending on the content. And the final product is graphite concentrate and the cost of which is uh, $400 per ton. The cost of, of mining for graphite and overburden is $4 and $3 per ton. And we will set the enrichment in the range of $13 to $18 per ton, depending on the content. The yield ratio also um, be correlated in the range of 4 to 8%. And cutoff grade will be taken at the level of 2% as preliminary iterations have shown that under the given conditions, this is the optimal parameters that brings the most profit at the strategic planning stage. Um, well, we'll take the resulting angles from 35 to 45 uh, degrees, which are distributed over the conditional zones. So let's proceed directly with the creation of this scenario. We will indicate the main information about the project, which is the name and location. Then we configure the display of output information in the settings menu. For tabular data, we will indicate the multiplicity equals one decimal uh, place and the multiplier is a million. So we will see the values in million tons and to visualize wireframes, we will use previously prepared presets.
the list of the horizons will be loaded from the previously prepared ones and the height of the each horizon is 15 meters and the upper point is plus 150 meters and the lower point is minus 350 meters. So next, let's add the block model and we specify the attribute of the content of the useful component and the attribute of the um, class materials, which we will continue to work with. Uh, then we will specify the uh, volumetric weights of uh, four rocks and four rocks containing useful components, the corresponding attribute, and then we will activate the list of horizons. To indicate the resulting angles of the final contour of the pit, we will use wireframes. And for upper part of the formation, we will, since in most cases soft formations are present, um, the slope angle will be reduced. Also, conditionally, we will divide our field you know, with three more wireframes western, northern, and southern parts. So let's move on to completing the project. We will add four zones for each frame and we will use filter that we prepared in advance. This filter specifies each specific wireframe for each individual case. So we are setting north for um, 45 degrees, south uh, for 40 degrees, the overburden is 32 degrees, and for the rocks of the western side of the pit is um, 43 degrees. And uh, we are setting the price adjustment coefficient in the range of from 0.5 to 1.2 in increments of uh, 0.05. The cost of the final product will be set as $400 per ton. And we will set the cost of uh, processing at the level of uh, 13 to $18 per ton, depending on the content. Let's assume that the larger content is um, the cheaper the enrichment process costs us. So the cutoff grade is set at the level of 2%. So anything below this content, content will be considered uh, overburdened. The output coefficient will be set different from each type of rock. Uh, the lower the content is, the lower the output and vice versa. It's like directly proportional relationship. And we will set the cost of mining operations associated with excavation and transportation at the level of um, $4 and $3 per ton for mineral and overburden respectfully. Two parameters related to mining cost are set separately to make sure that we enter the most accurate information. The resulting value is represented by the sum of excavation and transportation costs. So we set the indicators of losses and impoverishment for rocks containing a useful component at the level of um, 10 and 5% respectively.
So to calculate um, to, to calculate the net present value indicator, we'll set up a discount rate at 12% and the size of annual production at the level of 15 million tons. Um, it really doesn't matter if you forgot to uh, enter some data during the preparation of the project because basically you can always return and complete the process. So let's set the resulting default angle before blocks that may not fall within the range limited by the wireframes as 42 degrees. We will uh, make calculations and uh, get instant results. We'll see that for the price adjustment coefficient, mining is not profitable. And let's see uh, the sets of blocks that fall into each uh, of the sets corresponding to the price adjustment factor. As you can see, with the increase in the coefficient, the number of blocks increases, which is logical since the cost of each block containing a useful component increases. So for coefficient, um, so what coefficient is optimal for our artificial created uh, conditions, we will try to, like in order to answer this question, we would need to um, deal with the issue in more detail. Overall, in K-Mine software, the optimization models provide several options for analyzing the received information. The simplest and fastest are uh, prepared chart that allow you to draw preliminary estimates and conclusions. For example, the differential graph uh, shows the difference between the end shells of the feed. And uh, as you can see, the maximum profitability is achieved with a coefficient numbered seven, which corresponds to a coefficient of 0.8 which happened because of the ratio of minerals and overburden. But even after this, a uh, significant increase in the mineral resource continues. And in order to extend the life of the enterprise, the coefficient is often adopted. After which, a significant increase in the mineral resource ends. And until then, as a rule, the company can successfully operate and achieve the desired profitability. Alternative, uh, alternatively, a pit with a coefficient of 1.05 can be taken as a final contour. And that is corresponds to the number 12. Uh, and we will take it as a, the main one um, with which we will continue to work. So let's build a wireframe that will be based on the price adjustment factor of 1.05 for further use as a guideline. As you can see, the angles uh, in the resulting pit differ depending on the geological zones indicated by us earlier. So uh, in the next video, we will see the section where we will consider the several additional options for estimating the final uh, contour. So we, we can choose the optimal one. Um, the first example is based on the analysis of the wireframes. In some cases, it really has significant effect and shows optimization results from a different angle. For this analysis, we need to download uh, the contours that, of interest for us, um, which would, uh, we would like to compare as wireframes. And by activating the visibility from the largest to the smallest, it's possible to track the growth of each subsequent contour in the relation to the previous one. So next, let's build a section in order to visually evaluate the difference between uh, the wireframes along the specific line. With the help of presets, the section will be built in seconds and overall the setup just doesn't take uh, long. We can see that uh, longitudinal uh, section shows uh, significant changes between uh, price adjustment frames, uh, wireframes, and the farther to the east, the more significant it is. From this, we can conclude that the price of the final product significantly uh, affects the final contours, and the choice of the optimal one must be treated uh, with a margin, so we would leave reserved lands on the surface around the pit, since the pit can significantly expand if the price of the final product rises. For comparison, you can build also a cross section. Uh, let's draw a line at the uh, deepest point of the plant pit from north to south. 
And we will see that the northern part of the peat is more subject to changes than the southern one. It's worth keeping this information in mind when we make strategic decisions like planning communications on the surface of a peat. Also, going back to the resulting table, check out the fact that hidden lists contain a lot of information that can help with uh, making decisions in a given situation. So if we need to analyze only the basic information, it's possible to just to hide a more detailed description and export only the necessary information to Excel. As you can see, the information was transferred to Excel without inserted lists. And if we move on to the next analysis, we will analyze the marginal profit indicator. It is equal to the ratio of profit to expenses. This indicator is a percentage, and in some cases, the optimal open pit is considered to be the one whose marginal profits is closest to 20%. In our case, these are the coefficients uh, 1.05 and 1.1 based on the results of the preliminary analysis. So remember that after the coefficient of uh, 1.05, there is not a significant increase in the mineral. Judging by this indicator, the preliminary analysis showed a fairly accurate result. And now transferring data to Excel and not building the graphs, it would be a big mistake because the further analysis will depend on qual uh, qualifications of the engineer that is doing it. So many graphs can be built with different dependencies depending on what needs to be analyzed and which indicators are the key. So finally, the best part we left for the dessert, and this is the functionality of the optimal pit model, um, which was expanded. And although it's still in the beta, we decided to show you these features. Uh, you will be able to see these updates in the next release. Um, so let's make some settings first. We will indicate the coefficient that was uh, chosen in the previous stages. Uh, it's 1.05 uh, and try to create three pushbacks in automatic mode. We define the width of the working platform as 60 meters. The minimum area of the pushback is 20,000 square meters and the mini minimum area of the bottom pit is uh, 5,000 uh, square meters. And uh, um, the parameter responsible for the possibility of deepening is uh, 120 ppm, which is per milli. Next, we set uh, the target parameters for the search for the pushback, which are three equal parts by the amount of mineral uh, in the final circuit, which is um, 60 million tons. Next, we will activate all available horizons. By, um, by the way, at this stage, we can limit the search for pushback by elevation. After that, we can start the calculation. It will take some time. And um, the more blocks in the mo block model, the search conditions and other parameters, the longer calculations will take. So let's see the results. Uh, the principle is the same, really, with the uh, finite contours. We can display the blocks that got into push the pushback and um, which is left after the removal of the pushback in the accumulative and differential modes. The search for pushback uh, includes several cr uh, critical criteria, uh, the main ones being the optimality criterion, for example, optimal NPV, also a um, continuity criterion, um, and we, when we are working out the pushback, continuity uh, must always be observed. Its connection must be at least ensured by the width of the working platform and other conditions that ensure the possibility of working out the pushback. In the event that the pushback that was obtained as a result of automatic uh, search if it doesn't um, satisfy any requirements, you can do also manual construction using guidelines or wireframes. 
Also, this method can be widely used if the enterprise has established or adopted a certain pushbacks over time. Adjusting them to the final contours is not difficult. You can also use the manual method of constructing the pushbacks in cases where automatic methods showed the direction, but let's say didn't cover the needs that cannot be entered in the, in the model. In any case, the manual construction method can be used as a reference and as one that improves the automatic one. So let's see uh, the contours on which our pushbacks will be based. It's four contours um, that were previously created. Conventionally, the center of the pit, um, south, north, and a separate part, east. Let's specify similar parameters for manual construction. If the blocks uh, are not defined in any of the pushbacks, they will be included in the separate one, which is indicated in the parameters. And we will not use height restrictions. We will only indicate the layer in which each of the restrictions will be stored for each individual pushback. In this menu, it's possible to take into account the pushback with angular dependencies when you are constructing the final contour, or you can include and exclude all the blocks that will be in this contour regardless of the dependencies. So in this case, the calculation will be made instantly since the set of the blocks uh, has already been greatly simplified by establishing certain guidelines. So let's see the results of the lines. The blocks were assembled in accordance with the guiding contours, um, also taking into account angular dependencies. Blocks that did not fall into any pushback according to the criterion of minimal bottom area or another were discarded into a separate pushback. And we're going to create wireframes for each of the pushbacks to continue the planning process. And for the record, it is better to use different colors for each of the pushbacks. By visualizing each of the pushback in order from largest to smallest, we can observe observe the potential main uh, sequence of the mining sections of the pit, which can and will be used in uh, subsequent stages of planning. So let's get back to the modular data on the pushback. And we will see that all the necessary and interesting information can be found uh, found in the result, uh, resulting tables for each of the pushbacks. Yeah, so to so the tabular data on the pushbacks. All right, so I mean, to sum up today's stream, we reviewed the cycles of creating key components of the digital environment and began the mine planning process. In the K-mine environment, we created block model, wireframes, populated the block model, and also got acquainted with the new features in the field of geology. And the second part, we considered the option of creating the optimization plan using the examples of um, graphite deposit in K-Mine software and also reviewed options for evaluating and choosing the final contour of a pit. And in conclusion, you saw the functionality of the optimization model in the field of push pushback creations, uh, which is the final stage of the development and will be available to users in the first quarter of 2023. So in the next stream, uh, which will be a logical continuation of today's topic, we will look at the concept of mind planning again using the latest model, which is automatic bit design, and we'll share with you uh, some examples in more details. All right, so let's see if we have any questions here. And uh, uh, for the questions I would like to include in, in our conversation, our mining engineer Vitaly, who will answer your questions. Vitaly, are you here? Uh, I don't hear you. Oh, 
Oh, okay, here. <laughs> cool. Okay, perfect. So the first question is, um, if the mineral deposit is within wetland, river, or protected area, can the block model uh, can the block model plot those environmentally sensitive areas within the ore deposit? Okay, so the answer will be: um, it is possible to to enter any text or numeric information into the block model. So it, it's just uh, necessary to create a separate field, uh, which is uh, uh, this particular factor will be described. So and after that, you can calculate this data and uh, use these attributes to visualize your block model on the map. This part of the block model. And uh, if you would um, kind of like prioritize uh, the mine planning process, what stage of mining process do you think is the most important? Um, okay, so when you talk about imp some important things during the mining process, um, I'm sure that uh, the most people think that, uh, the, and they think right, I think that the most important process is life of mine planning. Because um, during this process, we usually uh, try to resolve a lot of different uh, uh, issues, a lot of different advantages we have to uh, uh, we have to fix. So, um, but uh, by the way, all of the stages of the planning, they are all of them are really important. And what I would like to highlight here that um, the is um, not less even important that connection between these different stages of the planning because um, um, you know when uh, different departments create different plans and no any connections between them it's no no any <laughs> like positive results because so that's why the connection is a really important thing and uh, I think that it's uh, really very important this uh, uh, plan reconciliation process because after after we create the plan, we try to follow this plan, but we don't know how much we have followed it. So we have to do this reconciliation and uh, provide this information to the old planning departments. Yeah. So. Um... And what happens with the quality of the rocks when you do um, reblocking, and how it affects the accuracy of the model? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, that's an interesting question. Um, you know, I, I was uh, involved in some interesting communication with uh, engineers and geologists, and geology said, "Here is a block model. You can use it." And engineer take it, look on it, and he said. Oh, I can't use it because uh, for my modules I need to use a block model with a regular block size. Can you please reblock it? And geology said, no way. If you will reblock it, you will lose the accuracy. You will not describe your ore body. You will lose in, in the important information. But engineer said, I can't work with a regular block model. So please do something. And after that. Uh, geologist uh, finally gave up and said uh, okay i can do this for you but don't show it to anyone <laughs> you know because geology just for geology it's uh, really interesting but it it should uh, yeah, it should have some continuous so of course some part of information could be lost so and what about our um, reblocking um, uh, methods in chemine so you can uh, uh, make some transitions from smaller blocks to bigger blocks and from bigger blocks to smaller blocks so it's really uh, a big difference between them so when we uh, trying to split the big blocks by uh, smaller blocks uh, in this case it uh, nothing very exciting so we, we, we will just expand this information from the biggest block to the small small ones but when we try to um, combine the smaller blocks into the bigger block so here we have to decide what would uh, what kind of information will we use uh, to do that so we can use in chemine um, weighted average information by the volume it will be recalculated it also it could be recalculated uh, by weighted average by the weight uh, weight of this block and in case if you would like to take into our consideration only the biggest block 
uh, in this uh, in uh, all of these blocks that should be combined so we can take just uh, average by biggest including block yeah there okay is my um we also <laughs> Thank you for your answer and for the drama between geologists and engineers. Uh, um, well, the, um, we also have a question um, if this presentation will be um, available in PDF. This presentation will be available in a recording video, so um, you will have access to that. Uh, overall, we can also uh, send you a presentation about the this specific bit uh, optimization uh, model uh, or you can just download it from our website and uh, the other question is can the same process be done in for the underground deposit so for the underground deposit it will be a separate model and uh, uh, that will be available in 2023 so currently this specific this specific model is only for open pit we will do the separate stream for the underground um, well, I think that's it. Um, thank you so much, everyone who joined in. Thank you, Vitaly. Don't forget uh, to follow our LinkedIn page and uh, um, happy upcoming holidays and hope to see you guys in 2023. Thank you so much. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye.